What if I told you that this huge Hollywood writer's strike that is shaking the industry is in fact all about artificial intelligence? No, no, don't close the video just yet. I'm going to give you hard evidence. I'm going to give you quotes. I'm going to show you how even the timing comes down to these writers trying to get ahead of them becoming very irrelevant. And in fact, I bet that these writers know that very soon, 80% of them could easily be out of work due to artificial intelligence. And just when you think that old pro has gone crazy, that this silly YouTuber is making up nonsense, if you stick around for the entire video, I'm going to show you what artificial intelligence can do. I'm going to give you a video of me using it. And at the end of this, I guarantee you, you will no longer think that artificial intelligence is a fad or overblown. Here we go. Explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. It's what we do each and every day, but this time it seems a little heavier. Yes, we're going to keep you ahead of the big curve, that being the artificial intelligence curve. Something is coming, something that is both extremely promising in its power and also dangerous, and I mean that. Artificial intelligence threatens to revolutionize nearly everything about our society. By the end of this video, I think you will understand that. But for Hollywood and for writers, it is right there, right now, at their doorstep, preparing to turn them all into Luddites. Perhaps they already are. Just like if you go and watch the movie Hidden Figures and see that the NASA uh, employees, at one time, many of them were computers. They were human computers doing advanced math. Of course, those jobs don't exist anymore. And soon, that could be the very same case for writers. Now, before you think, oh, pro, you've gone uh, absolutely bonkers, well, Let's take a look at an article out of Deadline by Dominic Patton, David Robb, and Peter White, some of the most prestigious writers that Deadline has. The article is called Hollywood Hit with Writer Strike After Talks with AMPTP Fail, Guild Slam Studios for Gig Economy, Gig Economy Mentality. And folks, as we get in this article, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms. When you click it, we're talking about that notification bell. This is one of those weird videos where I don't know how this will do. It's not your typical Disney does something bad kind of thing. It's not your topic on Super Mario doing great. This is far deeper. It's far more resonating. I feel like I have to do this or else I would be doing a major disservice to all of you. But let's get to this main paragraph here that I feel is uh, buried a little deep, but highly, highly important. One of the big contentious issues that the Writers Guild wants is in regards to artificial intelligence. Here's what it says. On the topic of AI, artificial intelligence, the WGA wanted to regulate use of artificial intelligence on MBA-covered projects. Artificial intelligence can't write or rewrite literary material. In other, in other words, freeze it out. Make sure that only humans can do this. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. It's because AI is at least as good as humans right now. And in the future, it's going to be far superior. And it will put all of them out of a job. It will decimate many of the uh, positions around Hollywood. It can't be used as source material, and MBA-covered material can't be used to train artificial intelligence, again, because they're terrified of this thing. The, the response from the studios was a rejection of the WGA's proposal and then a counteroffer of annual meetings to discuss advancements in technology, and that's because these studios understand that this will change everything, and not only that, but the studios recognize that they do not exist in a vacuum. No. They are in competition with places like China and anywhere else that uses artificial intelligence to write scripts will eventually, and I say that knowing that it's not far away, far outstrip anything that humans can do. Again, you may laugh about it. I will prove it shortly. Hang tight. Let's take a look now at CBR.com. This article, not very old at all, one day ago, Avengers Endgame director says artificial intelligence generated films are two years away. That's a big deal. The use of artificial intelligence is growing exponentially, and Avengers Endgame director Joe Russo believes it could hit the film industry far sooner than some might expect. Speaking at the Sands International Film Festival, as reported by Collider, Russo, who revealed he is on the board of several AI companies, discussed the development of AI technology and guessed that entirely AI-generated films could appear in two years. That's not just the script. That's everything. He prefaced it by stating, potentially, what you could do with it is obviously use it to engineer storytelling and change storytelling. 
So you have a constantly evolving story either in a game or in a movie or a TV show. You could walk into your house and save the AI on your streaming platform. Hey, I want a movie starring my photoreal avatar and Marilyn Monroe's photoreal avatar. I want it to be a rom-com because I've had a rough day. And it renders a very competent story with dialogue, he continued, adding that it could even go so far as to render the user in this film or non-AI generated projects. Folks, it goes beyond that. Imagine if you said, hey, I want to watch an entire movie that actually has Luke Skywalker be the hero instead of the loner, the uh, pathetic uh, uh, person that we saw in The Last Jedi. Remake The Last Jedi for me and make it the way I want. AI can do that. And it will be doing it soon. And we just need to, we need to understand that this is coming. We need to understand that celebrities even should be worried about this because there is coming a day where AI will create whatever you want. And we don't need celebrities anymore to, to fill that role. Now, you may all think I'm crazy, but it's time to, it's time to lay the cards on the table. I sat down with uh, ChatGPT, just the free version, and with a little bit of work, just a little bit, having talked with artificial intelligence experts, having learned a little bit about how this works, I was able to direct ChatGPT to write an entire episode of Seinfeld as if the show had never gone off the air. I've invited some friends to come on and to do a table read. We're going to do the first part of the episode. There's three parts, of course, before commercial breaks. We're going to read the first part. Members of this channel will get to see the entire episode, uh, but you'll get the idea just from the first part of it. You don't have to see all of it in order to go, oh, wait a minute, this is, this is amazing. After we read this, uh, this script, after we read this episode of Seinfeld generated by artificial intelligence, 95% of it, I did curate it some, Gave it the human touch. And that's what's going to happen as well, folks. What's going to happen is, just like with calculators, it's not that math stops. It's not that people stop doing math. It's that we use calculators, and those of us who are very savvy at it know how to direct the calculators to come up with the right answers. We still understand the math. It's just we go way faster because we have the calculators in hand. We have the tools to help us go exponentially quicker. And that's what artificial intelligence does. With just a few key prods, a few great ideas. You can send it running. Now, if you tell it just to make any old episode, you know, if you just say, hey, I want a Simpsons episode, it'll give you one, but it'll probably be luck lackluster. But if you tell it a number of criteria, a, num a, n a number of specificities, another, a number of parameters provided to it, then it'll just explode and it'll do everything that you want. Then you just touch it up a little bit and boom, you have content produced at Oh, I don't even know. One one hundredth of the effort that it would have taken previously. So take a look at this Seinfeld episode. It is generated by artificial intelligence. It is written by AI. We'll read it, then I'll show you how I did it. And I think by then you'll say to yourself, I see why the writers are striking. Because if they don't strike now, if they don't take out artificial intelligence now from the industry, which they won't succeed in, I don't believe. There's too much at stake, and other countries are not going to follow suit. But if they don't stop it now, they will be irrelevant very soon, by and large. They will go the way of the human computers of NASA. They will lose their jobs. And the workforce, revolving around content creation in this manner, script writing, joke writing, etc., will probably drop 80% of all the people working in it. Here's the episode. Fade in. Interior coffee shop day. Jerry and George are sitting at a table, sipping on their coffee. Jerry looks agitated. Uh, what? What's wrong, Jerry? You look like you're about to explode. It's not like you, you know? It's Lena. She's driving me crazy. Ah, the girlfriend with expensive taste. I told you to watch out for those ones. They'll get you every time, Jerry. Every I know, time. I know, I know, but it's not just that. I feel like I'm always the one paying for everything, and it's starting <laughs> to add up. <laughs> yeah, those girls can be a real drain in your wallet, Jerry. Suddenly, Elaine and Kramer burst into the coffee shop. Hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> I've got a new business idea, Jerry. Oh, not now, Kramer. What's wrong, Jerry? It's Lana. I want to break up with her, but I don't know how. <laughs> I'm teaching him how to make women disgusted. Oh, that sounds like fun. Can I be the other woman? 
other woman? What are, what are you talking about? You know, the woman you cheat on Lena with to make her dump you. That's ridiculous, George. Hey, Jerry, you should really listen to George. He's got a point. Come on, Jerry. It's just pretend. I'm not going to cheat on anyone, Elaine. Hey, I could help you with that. I've got a new business where I repair burned out light bulbs. Just tell her you've picked up a second job helping me with it. No more time for hanky panky. Repaired light bulbs. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a real money maker. How do you even do that? It's easy. I just open up the bulb, replace the filament, and voila! Good as new. Jerry rolls his eyes and takes a sip of his coffee while his friends continue to chatter on around him. Look, I appreciate the help, but I don't want to cheat on Lana. I just need to figure out how to break up with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I hear you. You don't want to be stuck with someone who's always draining your bank account. Maybe I could just talk to her about it. You know, be honest about how you're feeling. <laughs> yeah, because that always works. He's got a point. Women don't want to hear about your financial woes, Jerry. I guess you're right, but how do I do it without hurting your feelings? Suddenly, Lana walks into the coffee shop looking stunning as always. Jerry panics. Oh no, it's Lana. Act natural. Act natural? Jerry, the hell does that even mean? Lana Hi. approaches the table, smiling. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Jerry tries to act nonchalant, but he can feel his palm sweating. Oh, hi, Lana. What are, you, what are you doing here? Just grabbing a coffee. What about you? Oh, same. It's a coffee store, you know, so... Coffee? Oh, hi, Elaine. Hey, Kramer. <laughs> hey, Lena. Hey, hey, how are you doing? Jerry can't take it anymore. He blurts out, Lana, we need to talk. Lana looks taken aback and the rest of the group falls silent. Is everything okay, Jerry? It's just that I think we should see other people. Lana's expression falls and the group stares at Jerry in shock. Oh, well, that's a shocker. Blew it right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. Jerry looks at George, who appears disappointed and frustrated. What? I had to do it. Jerry, are you sure about this? Yeah, what brought this on? It's working that second job with me on the light bulbs, isn't it? Jerry takes a deep breath and looks at Lana. I can't keep up with your expensive taste, Lana. It's not fair to me. What are you talking about? I don't expect you to buy me things. You ordered three lobster tails last night. Three! Yeah, and caviar the night before that. He told me about it. Yeah, and that purse you wanted last week cost a month's rent. Lana looks embarrassed, but still defensive. Jerry, you told your friends about those things. I didn't ask you to buy me all that. That's not the point, Lana. I feel like I'm having to keep up with your lifestyle. It's just not sustainable for me. See, I told you, honesty is the best policy. Jerry shoots George a look. Look, I'm sorry, Lana, I really care about you, but I don't think we're compatible in that way. Lana looks hurt, but nods. I understand. The group falls silent, and the camera zooms in on Jerry's face as the first commercial break begins. It stops as George cuts in. You know, Lana... In a week or so, when you're over this, there's a nice little McDonald's down the road here. I could buy you a French fry. And commercial break. Now, folks, we'll read the entire episode for the members section, but I think that's enough to show you that, in fact, ChatGPT, a free version of artificial intelligence, is more than sufficient at setting forth a basic skeleton outline, which then writers can use to create all kinds of jokes or simply let those futuristic and high-end paid-for chat GPT artificial intelligence modules do the trick. Uh, and if you remember yep. the movie Hidden Figures where the uh, the ladies who are working at NASA are called computers mm -hmm. because they're literally computing. And that's how that was done in the 60s. Of course, nobody does that anymore because computers took those jobs. We're talking about 
digital computers now. It's and I think that's that where up. we're going. What do you guys that, think? Well, that actually makes me think of the Robert Munch book uh, we read with our kids tonight where the, the, the train station set up and their computer is all broken. And there's that guy at the desk behind and he's trying to convince the mayor that the computer is not broken by like trying to rearrange all of the, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The train station one, Robert Munch, anybody going? Tell going? the engine that could, I bet. Canadian I thing? Is times. Robert Munch only Canadian? I think I, I can. I think I can. I uh, think I can. I'm sorry. But anyway. You guys have little engine Canadian. stories? I really thought the Zamboni station was more up your alley. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> free snow. That's right. So uh, don't eat the yellow snow, Floral. That's yeah, no. Don't want to do that. Never eat the yellow snow. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, give me your thoughts real quick on the rider strike. Uh, one, one last little thought on this: What do you guys think about the rider strike, and what do you think about artificial intelligence, its impact on the future of entertainment? We'll start with Floral. I think it's going to be fun to see what actually happens. Uh, competition never hurt anything, ultimately. Um, I mean, if the writers can actually produce something of quality compared to current year, um, that'd be good. But I mean, if a computer can put out what we're seeing on screen currently, I don't care. <laughs> what, what can it do in five years, right? It, oh, exactly. So, uh, but at the same time, like when what is it? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So let's see what the uh, writers can actually come up with here on in. There you go. Kramer Wolf, what do you think? Uh, are we going to get uh, people going home now and saying, you know what, artificial intelligence, make me a new Last Jedi where Luke is actually competent? Honestly, if, if for nothing else than for their own fan fiction for headcanon that is significantly by an order of magnitude Maybe Cam is than dead. What Disney, <laughs> than what Disney put out, then absolutely. I was actually having this conversation with a co-worker earlier. This is really interesting, honestly. There's obviously some, some polish that is required, but as this technology continues to evolve and develop and move forward, it's really, really something to, to be looked at with a, a, a level of scrutiny that isn't being attributed to the current uh entertainment industry and i i made this remark to a friend earlier that ai i don't honestly think is being trained to uh write with ideology over narrative so it's entirely possible that a lot of this ai stuff could be written and and configured in a way that produces product that's at the very least passable and this was as as a seinfeld fan that's my favorite sitcom of all time this was, I, I could picture and hear the characters in my head, despite the horrible presentation I did for Kramer. Um, <laughs> it was passable, right? <laughs> it was, I, I, I could hear the characters, I could hear the actors, I could see the sets, and I was like, you know what? If, if somebody that knew what they were doing put just a little bit of spit shine on this, a little bit of polish, this would easily slot into any season of you know, Seinfeld. I, I gotta say, when, uh, when Kramer talked about uh, the chest hairs and the uh that the, was the kramer right density. on the money that it was, was yeah. kramer <laughs> and isn't it isn't it impressive valiant that uh our already artificial intelligence i mean you could you could tell it to write an episode of the office yep you could tell it any of these kind of things and you can do crazy stuff like for example you could say do an episode of seinfeld but instead of seinfeld being the main character it's dr jordan peterson he's the main character and, and there is no seinfeld <laughs> and it will do it you know and it'll start off you know it'll have elaine say something it'll say well, you know, Lane, actually, if you were thinking about it from the perspective of a, a clinical psychologist, really, you'd come to the Jungian idea, you know, and it'll, it'll just go and go and go. Valiant, where is the end of this? And is there any danger in, in artificial intelligence for entertainment? Uh, as soon as Hollywood and the software manufacturers who create whatever chat GPT variety that they use... Uh, figure out the licensing residual issues and all the legal issues involved, uh, Hollywood writers have a real problem because modern Hollywood writing, obviously not all of it, there are some very, very smart, savvy, talented people out there that are writing tremendous television shows and movies out there. Old school guys and girls no matter what their ages are, that really love the craft and just want to tell a good story. The unfortunate thing is they're a dying breed. It's like modern music, music, modern art, art. It is skillless, it is talentless, and it is freaking lazy. 
it's soulless. mostly trash, soulless trash, uh, written by a bunch of people who just decided this is what I want to get my college degree in because it's better than Starbucks. That's what I feel like when I watch most TV, look at most modern art these days, listen to most modern music that isn't actually pumped through a computer to be completely generated. Music! Modern music has been chat GPT now for, what, the last 15, 20 years at least? Oh, yeah. I mean, There's just, nothing real in it. No, corporatized, computerized, auto-tuned, hot trash, generic trash. I can't tell the difference between most modern artists or most modern musicians. They all sound and look the same. I don't care. Most television shows are like this. Now, there's some great talented people out there. Do the Writers Guild uh, and their members have some legitimate concerns? Perhaps so. Um, but in, at the most part, I think that they ought to be very concerned at this point because some of the shows that are going off air right now in response to the strike, frankly, are not likely to come back. And they exactly. Probably, they probably shouldn't anyway. So, Well, I, we did all of this, and I want to give all of you a round of the applause market, for though. it. Yeah. Let the free yeah. market decide. That's, that's the point, Andrew. If, if, here's, here's the one thing, and I, I have an immense – I work in a creative industry – um, as a creative manager for a comic book company, um, I have immense respect for actual artists and actual writers, actual creators. But that being said, if AI, soulless AI, is producing content that is of higher quality than the crap the mainstream pushes out, through its posterior on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, then those people deserve to lose their jobs and somebody else, the alternative media, the alternative parallel economy, those people can slide in and fill those holes. So I'm just curious. You guys keep referring to AI as uh, soulless. So when you picture AI being a thing, <laughs> is it a redhead? This is going to this is going to go way deeper. Okay, way faster. hold on, hold on now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take that disrespect as so my hair is not red, but I have heavy Irish heritage. <laughs> I'll put it this way: since you brought it up, let me offer you a final thought. We've had Auto Tune, which is a a form of AI now for years. We now have uh, AI that can deep fake virtually any face, person. They can make one from scratch. How long is it before music companies and television companies just completely deep fake in AI actors and musicians? Mm -hmm. Get ready, folks. We're within a decade of that happening. It's going to be Why? fun. Absolutely. And you know, there was a time when we all thought that computers would never win in the game of chess. Today, humans cannot win against the top-level computers in chess. Ever. Skynet is, is here. Go. That's right. <laughs> so be afraid, writers be of Hollywood. Be afraid. Now, I want to give a round of applause to all of you guys for managing to be here. We did have several ladies lined up to play Elaine, and just through a number of odd circumstances, none of them could make it. Uh, we do apologize for that, but again, we're trying to be we're trying to be up with the times, folks. Okay, so give well, us some credit Well, you know, there. pro, real quick, it's like Jack Nicholson once said. You know, how do you write a woman? That's easy. I think of a man, and I take away reason. And accountability. Well, there come a hundred down votes Amen. on us right now. <laughs> That's a great end. Oh, oh God, people said a hearty amen. Many, many a monitor was just broken as, as a, ladies everywhere a, threw something at Valley. We love you, ladies, but I had to throw that joke <laughs> at the last the minute. I was, they they right set now. me up for that one too easy. well. I'm it was sorry. too easy. Yeah. Well, folks, for all the naysayers out there, you've seen it now. You've, you've listened to us read an episode uh, completely done by ChatGPT with just 5% maybe uh, extra elbow grease thrown in there to round it out. I hope you see now what's coming. And following this now, let's go to watching how that was done. I actually recorded uh, the process of creating that episode. It's very simple. Let's, ch uh, let's take a look now. So as you can see, I have this sped up a little bit. We're running this at a higher speed. But this is simply me... Uh, you can see on the screen how it was that I crafted this uh, this episode. Write the first third of a Seinfeld episode in which Jerry is trying to break up with a beautiful girlfriend because she has expensive tastes, and he feels obliged to buy her meals and gifts. George tries to teach Jerry how to make women disgusted. Elaine volunteers to play the role of the other woman to for Jerry to practice. Meanwhile, Kramer has started a business 
where he repairs burnt out light bulbs, yada, yada. Joke intended there, inside joke. Um, and you can see that it generates this entire thing. Now, here's the, the tricky part. Uh, and I think this is why some people don't realize what chat GPT can do. Watch what happens at the end of this. Once it's finished now, I said, I like that first attempt. Can you rewrite it mostly the same, but instead have Jerry and George discussing Lana while they're getting coffee together? Also notice that Lana was an invention of chat GPT. And then I uh, talked about uh, Elaine and Kramer could come into the coffee shop. It rewrites it exactly as we had it before, except now changes the setting, plays around with these new requests that I've had. Okay, so I look at that. Then I say, hmm, okay, what can we do with this? Okay, first of all, I go ahead and I copy this now, insert it into the script. I like what I see. Good. Can you keep going and have it end on a mini cliffhanger as we go to a final commercial? It's going to give me what it thinks would happen next. Then I'm going to go in and curate it. This is why I, I, I compare this to a calculator kind of situation. It's not that writing stops on the human side, but rather that the vast majority of the creative side can now be done. The content generation can be done, at least in the skeleton side of this thing, rapidly. And I mean rapidly. If you just take out the time it takes to type this stuff, I mean, I type really fast. Still, this would take me a long time. Uh, ChatGPT can generate it very, very quickly. And then you go in and you polish it. You tell it that you'd like to make some changes, but you don't have to just do that. You can go in and insert your own jokes. You can do whatever you want. And that's why this is in, in insanely powerful. There are some real concerns about artificial intelligence. We'll talk about those another time. But for right now, just know this is a big deal and it can generate a full episode. It can do so much more. This was just the free version that you all have access to as well. So there you go. That's what the writer's strike is all about. That's why Hollywood is freaking out. Folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.